Everyone is a moon and has a dark side which he never shows to anybody. Mark Twain Callisto by Elliot Summerfield Episode 1 Natural Consequences The International Galactic Space Agency sent research missions of five astronauts to each of Jupiter's four moons in the hopes of future colonization due to the impending uninhabitability of Earth from pollution. The crew of the Callisto mission were to be stationed in the Holrum Crater, situated in the Valhalla Basin, for two years, to uncover a predicted salty ocean beneath the surface and to send weekly reports of their findings. After four months and twelve days on Cal Base, the weekly report ceased with the last report detailing a successful drilling through Callisto's surface. One week of inactivity passed by, and the agency proposed to send a shuttle from one of the other bases to investigate. Before launch, approximately two weeks after the report ceased, a final radio message was received from Cal Base. This is... This is the last... Last report by engineer Zoe Morgan. All of the crew are dead. Life support has failed. The oxygen dome was destroyed. It's impossible to... Impossible to repair it. I've got about hours of O2 left. Carl is the only thing working on this base anymore. The other systems have been haywire for days now. Beneath, there was... It was... <laughs> it's not water like Gib Ford. I don't know what it is. None of us did. Whatever it is, it did... It did all of this! <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not... I'm not... I won't go into all of the details. It's with the best if no one knows. It doesn't matter now. Don't show this to anyone outside the agency. Let us just... go. Tell our family some... some story. It's for the best. Do that for them. Tell Sarah that... I'm sorry, I couldn't... I she'll know. I can't talk for long now. It's getting thinner. If you're going to come here, don't. Don't come here. No matter what you believe happened, what you see or hear, don't come to Callisto. We made that mistake and we paid the price for it. It's for the best. Believe me. I believe that. <laughs> I thought we were crazy at first, but <laughs> but we weren't. It was real. It, it is. Now I know. I, I know there is something down there beneath the surface of this moon. It's been there billions of years. Entirely alone. Waiting until we arrived. And it knows we're here. We're not alone. Goodbye. One hundred thirty three days before signal discovery. Dr. Gibson? Dr. Gibson? Mm. Allez, Sweet. Allez. Ah, hey, how are you? Hmm. Tetchy. Uh, Cryo isn't for everyone. First time? Hmm. 
Cryo-induced fatigue, they call it. Like an ice cream headache, times a thousand. You'll get over it. Be thankful you don't have it as bad as Tom. I think he's still vomiting up the breakfast he had before going in. Fill some in space to... One of the many reasons I picked you and Charlie for this. You were wasted on Earth. That's not helping. You know I could have been doing good there. Hey, before you know it, two years will pass. Just like that. Pity is not this headache, Dr. Gibson. I think we can dispense with the Dr. Gibson, Esme. Not in the office anymore. <laughs> all right, Dr. Gib... Sorry. Gib, sorry. That's all right. You're okay. How's the oxygen dome? If you've been there, of course. We have three weeks worth of breathable O2 in the auxiliaries. The dome will produce at least a week of oxygen for all five of us per three days. You have to end it to the agency to get some prime oxygen factories all the way out here. The wonders of modern tech, huh? We also have some avian wildlife as well. Robins, black birds. Mm, I didn't know that. Good to hear. I rather enjoy bird watching. Are you thinking about home? Trying not to. The first days will be the hardest. Getting used to everything. I was the same when I was at Mars, a year ago. You know, just waking up every day and finding a red planet outside your window. It's daunting. Literally otherworldly. I couldn't stop thinking about the distance between me and my folks back home. All that empty space. How much was it? 50 to 400 million kilometers. Huh, you know your space stuff. And all I could imagine were those millions and millions of miles of empty space that I'd traveled months to pass. My family were back on that small blue and green and white planet, drifting away. At the end of that, as soon as I touched down on Earth, I was called to lead the research mission here. Didn't manage to see them. My family, I mean. It was- Could you stop? Please? Sorry. Sorry. Stupid of me. You and Dr. Holmes are the only ones who know about- Yeah, I know, I know. I'm sorry. It won't happen again. Just know that you're not alone in that regard. Me and Charlie are here for you. We're all in the same boat. <sighs> Thanks. <laughs> Gib. Don't mention it. Say, so, Carl, mind opening up the starboard shutter? Wouldn't mind having a look outside. Complying. Enjoy the view, Dr. Gibson. Oh, and Carl? Yes, Dr. Gibson? New identification setting. Please identify me as Gib. Complying. Identification setting changed, Gib. Thank you. Wow. <sighs> Certainly a view. It's like the moon. <laughs> well, it is a moon. <laughs> Sorry, that was pedantic. Actually, Carl, mind opening the ceiling shutter too? I want to check something. Complying. It's just so... deserty. Well, we'll be out there in a few days. Need to get used to the place first. And there it is. Jupiter. Is that the... Uh... Great red spot. Just about, anyway. Like an eye, isn't it? Staring down. Eventually it'll disappear. One great big storm ceasing to spin. Reverse dilation of the papal. Morgan, good to see you. I wanted to chat, actually. Yep. What did I say? Zoe, please. Calling me Morgan makes me sound dull. Pity I can't put a memo in that tin can we call an AI. You can actually- Yeah, I know, Esme. Are you alright, actually? You're sweating. Mm, mm Mm-hmm, yeah, been down to the generator. It's like an oven down there. Has to, obviously, with how much it powers. The miracle of solar power, so long as it remains hot. I was checking it was operational before I let the machines do most of the work for us. I'm surprised you're still sore towards them. You know why. Uh, why? Oh, uh, Zoe was one of the engineers who got ousted by those new worker drones the Mars colonists use these days. Most engineers back on Earth have, really. Laid off. But we don't have drones here, Zoe. Apart from Carl, obviously. Makes you wonder why the agency didn't send drones to do our jobs here. Suppose flesh is cheaper in the current state of things. So that's why you're with us? You were here assigned? Twice. I was going to be part of the Europa mission, but Gib wanted someone reliable. The agency prefers the kind of employee who doesn't complain. So here I am. Where I've got the generator, generator coolant, ventilations, electronics maintenance for Carl, and sanitation to worry about. I was thinking we could do that last part in shifts. (laughs) 
You really think Tom is going to be doing mop duty? I've seen him. He's never done a full day's work in his life. Hey, I won't have that. Tom's dependable. Same as you. Then, just leave dependable old me to do the dirty work on Cal Base. One less thing for you to worry about, eh, boss? <sighs> How's the generator, then? Running well? Like a Trojan. <laughs> Knew it was, to be honest, just wanted to be down there for the heat. Cryo sleep isn't my preferred method of travel. <laughs> better than a 13-month journey. That would have been better than ice cream a day times a thousand. Anyway, you won't have to worry about cryo sleep for another two years. Not till the turtle comes back with those pods. Still, feels like you've been through a blizzard. Ugh. Not really used to things like that. Everyone has different side effects when they Not Dr. Holmes. What? Our psychologist was feeling rather well after she got out of her pod. Not throwing up or feeling like shit. Language. Hey, the boss wants an informal base. And besides, what would be wrong with the long journey? We get to know each other more, apart from Gib and Tom. I don't know anything about you or Holmes. I'll have plenty of time for that, Zoe. What about the rest of the base? I'd like to have a view other than Carl's. Everything works, if that's what you mean. I checked Carl's systems, he's a-okay. More's the pity. Comms is Tom's domain, so you'd better ask him. We are well stopped in the food department for our two years. Kitchen stuff works fine. Haven't made any external checks on the base. Yet. I would have thought you'd want to see who'd have the first... you know. Ah, right, yes. I'll discuss that once we've all convened. Ah, here you are. Tom. Mr. Stone. Mister? I don't think we need to go that far. Hey, boss. Tom, good to see you. Managed to get comms up? As well as could be expected. Can we send anything yet? Oh yeah, sure. Takes about four days for the message packages to reach the Mars colony, and another day after that for the moon stations. We can correspond with the other bases on Jupiter's moons. Ganymede being the closest one to us takes a few minutes for our messages to reach them. Though why Ganbase would want to listen about our shit is beyond me. So, five days is the time when our messages reach Earth. Wow, you sure do pay attention, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, Tom. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, got it, okay. Kind of funny, thinking about it. About what? Us being Callistans. That's if this moon is colonizable. Well, let's hope it will be, eh? No word from the agency, Tom? Not a boss. Apart from the instructions they provisionally gave us until their first transmission in five days' time, just getting settled. Start sample work. Oh, by the way, how come we don't have a shuttle? They didn't mention it in the training. The agency likes to cut corners. Ganbase is equipped with an extraction shuttle for any and all bases, should the event arise. That'll take somewhere between three to eight hours to reach us. That's nifty. Can you please not do that? Jeez, sorry, yes. Didn't know you were- The less said the better, I think, Zoe. Say, where's that psychologist? I haven't seen her since getting out of cryo. Bit cuckoo, if you ask me. Tom! The agency was right in sending her with us. Her credentials are exemplary, as were all of ours. I'm just saying, it's another mouth to feed, it's another bed to heat, Quit it's it. another- You could say the same thing about you. Come on, you two. Look, I'd consider Esme here valuable because she's a biologist, and the only one who can maintain the oxygen dome. Or you, Zoe, for maintaining the base's machines. And me, I'm also valuable. The agency saw me as the best in comms this side of Jupiter. A psychologist? Just to ask us questions at the end of each day? Yeah, not Tom. so- Tom! <sighs> they sent her because they know what isolation can be like on space missions. The same exact reason they sent you for communications. Not to mention she knows more about isolation than all of us put together. Just the fact that we have an extra crew member tagged on at the last second seems wasteful to me. Well, she's here. Not much you can do about that. No. Not much we can do about it. Hey, Doc. That's enough. Sorry, boss. Cryo talking. Hope you cleaned up after yourself. Zoe, same goes for you. Just dial it down a notch, alright? It's the first day, everyone's tetchy, to say the least. Let's just make the most of it, okay? Ah, you're all here. Speak of the devil. Zip it, Tom. Charlie, welcome. Thanks. We all getting together for something? Hey, Esme. Zoe. Thought we could do a little chinwag, yeah. Let's sit down, shall we? Aww. All crew together since we said our goodbyes. Wish we could have done some time in Zero G. Heard it's quite fun. We did the simulation. That's good enough. Well, believe or not, Zoe, it's not the most pleasant feeling. 
And you would not believe the amount of times I've hit my head in cabins. It's like every part of you is being tossed about. You can feel your insides moving around inside of you. Ugh. I think you've ruined that for me now. You know, I wouldn't have pegged you for the spacefaring type, Esme. Were you the first time, Tom? Huh. Suppose not. Uh, oh. Did you take those pills I gave you, Tom? Yeah. Just don't think they're working. Ugh. Oh, fucking hate cryo. Just wondering, was this your first fridge trip, Dr. Holmes? Hmm? Your first time in cryo sleep. Oh. Uh, no, actually. I've, uh, done it before. I thought this was your first space mission. <laughs> it is. But I've done cryo sleep before. Can't say I was exactly enthusiastic to go leaping into a pod. Where? The agency controls particularly our cryogenic use. Space travel only. This was during the development phase of it. I was part of a group testing exposure to cryosleep. I'm uh, not really supposed to talk about it, but we managed to allow those in cryogenic refrigeration to dream whilst under. I thought this was impossible. I mean, it is impossible. Well, that's with agency approved sleep chambers. The ones we had were prototypes, not yet designed to halt the significant parts of the brain that would allow dreaming. They believed that dreaming for prolonged amounts of time would, uh, well, affect them when they came out. Uh, purely experimental purposes only. And you were put under in one? Intended for a single day. After about four hours in, they pulled me out. Dreamt like a... Well, it was rather terrifying. They told me my heart rate decreased like I was about to have a heart attack. Gee whiz. No lasting damage, of course. Couldn't even remember what I dreamed of. <sighs> but uh, the agency didn't approve for further tests after my little test. Good. Jesus, you'd be... Fuck. No one else was hurt during the experiments before me. Luckily. So, why did the agency put you as the psychologist for this mission if you were part of that? Like Esme. I recommended her. Oh, so it's nepotism. Shut up. I was kidding! Kidding! So, yes, not my first time. You could say I was rather apprehensive about going in a second, but it was that or spend all these months alone. Anyway, how's things over at the med bay? Got everything sorted? Still sorting the supplies. The agency burdened me with more than a fair share. There are some boxes that I haven't even touched yet. Well, it'll take us a while before we sort everything we brought with us. Oh, actually, one thing I did want to ask. Has anyone else noticed that Jupiter hangs in the sky? It hasn't moved at all since we got here. I noticed that too. I think Esme can explain that better than me. Oh, well... <clears throat> Calisso and all of the other moons of Jupiter are tidally locked. That mean it always faces the same site where the object orbits. So to us, Jupiter remains at the same spot in the sky. This also means we've been in the dark for at least a week and a half, as we either be facing away or Jupiter will be eclipsing it. Are you a biologist or a physicist? Maybe I was the only one of us to pay attention during training. Come on, pipe down, both of you. It's the first day. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, boss. So, yeah. That's why. Neat. Why does it happen? Natural consequences. Gravity. Well, I think it's quite beautiful, though. We're the first humans in history to see it from Callisto, after all. Some of the first 20 people to see it with our own eyes. Thinking about it, when are we going to go out? Well, we were discussing that before you came in. About the first footprint, Gib? Ah, right. Oh, actually, there's one little thing I want to do first before we discuss that. What? Aha! Now you're speaking my language. After cryo sleep? <sighs> Does help the nerves. Just a little toast is all, nothing more. First day, after all. Seems fitting. I'll have one. Zoe? I'm game. Yes, May? <sighs> Not that much. Just a little. Oh, Carl, wanna join in the toast? I would be happy to, Gib. Come on then! Speech! Speech! Tom! Speech! Speech! Alright, Tom, alright. To our two-year mission on this beautiful Jupiter moon. 
to the coveted and hopefully there salt ocean that can make the expansion of our humble race possible. To Calbase, our home. To Callisto. To, to Callisto. Callisto. One hundred twenty-eight days before signal discovery. Ah, uh, this on? This on, Carl? Affirmative, Gib. Ah, all right. <clears throat> uh, this is Dr. Samuel Gibson, mission commander of the Callisto mission, reporting from Carbase. Hey there, Moon Station. Uh, things are going fine. It's been a pretty good five days so far. Uh, there will be ten days for us when you get this report. Thanks to Tom for telling me that. Having a few drunk nights with each other. Uh, I know that's not exactly loud, but uh, I thought there's no point in lying about it, and I'm sure you guys would understand. Also, you did supply us with a fair amount for two years. How else are we going to get through them? <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, personnel-wise, everyone's settled quite nicely. Apart from maybe Esme. Uh, Dr. Esme Larock. She's quite focused on her work with the Oxygen Dome. Haven't seen her around apart from in there. Unlock the door. Complying. Oxygen dome entrance unlocked. <sighs> Carl, increase spreader the ferns. I saw some that were too dry this morning. Make sure the bells are fit too. Complying. This had better be good, Zoe. I'm busy. Time for tea, Esme. Dinner? We tried notifying you. You had your comlink on silent. Oh, is dinner already? I thought it was afternoon. <sighs> Have you got a watch on you? Keep the time, maybe? Come on, it's Charlie's turn cooking. Apparently, she's got a good recipe for processed frozen meatloaf. Never had meatloaf before. Never have I. It'll be a common meal on Cal Base, apparently. Well, if you don't interrupt me when I'm working, we might have some ungrown vegetables to add before too long. Oh, yeah. How's that going, by the way? I'm happy to help when I'm off my shift. I wouldn't worry yourself. Carl's an able assistant. Is he? Right. Well, let me know if you need an actual pair of hands. Mm-hmm. Right, come on. Dinner. Carl, put specimen CL005 to warm storage. Can me updated on its progress. Complying. Speaking of that, give our regards to the botany division of the agency. They've outdone themselves with what they've given us. What else? Oh, yeah. We went out onto the surface on our third day, just to get a sense of the landscape of the crater, and uh, to make a preliminary site while we constructed our drill, as well as Zoe, our engineer, having the chance to check out the externals. We didn't find anything wrong, thankfully. Give our regards to the engineering as well. <laughs> Tom won the coin toss to make the first footprint. Lucky bastard. We all had to mute our comlinks just to stop listening to him going on about it. Aw, just think of it, you guys! Tom Stone, first man on Callisto. Oh, I've got to send a photo of the footprints to my parents. Gib, do you mind if I mute Tom for a bit? Over. Honestly, Zoe, go right ahead. Over. Ah, oh, Zoe, lighten up. Tom, there's no need to rub it in. Over. Yeah, but come on. First man on Callisto, guys. This is history in the making. You could at least have the courtesy to say over. Over. Ah, uh, don't be such a spoil sport, Doc. You're just mad because I beat you first round. There's hardly anything competitive about a coin toss. Yeah, exactly. Now, let's quit with the celebrations and get to work. Esme, how are you doing? Mm, I'm fine. Remember, keep your oxygen intake low. Slow breathing, you'll take to it. With the surface, our forebears predictions were generally right. The geography is frankly quite simple. No mountains, volcanoes, or other tectonic features. Only craters and multi-ring structures are the largest features on the moon. 
quite similar, element-wise, to asteroids. Magnesium, iron, and an abundance of carbon. From the outset, we don't believe that the surface wields any organic materials. Only trace elements. <laughs> if that. Apart from the starting analysis, not much in the way of research thus far. Esme has been doing a secondary research task with her plants in the oxygen dome. She hasn't been boring me with the details of that. I've been testing the sample's reactivity with some chemicals, acid, that sort of thing. Won't bore you with the details. There aren't that many, anyway. Charlie has been meeting each of us at the end of every day or so, making notes of our health, how we're feeling, etc. She hasn't been intrusive at all, from my sessions, at least. I can tell that Esme is slightly on edge after she's had a moment with Charlie. Tom even more so. I think he might have a slight phobia of doctors. Well, medical ones at least. Recording. All right. Um, Dr. Charlie Holmes, second psychology report on Thomas Norman Stone, communications officer. Tom, welcome. Thanks for coming. How's work going? <sighs> fine. Just fine. Not difficult, not easy. Just fine. I mean, it's what I do. It's fine. It's going just fine. Well, that's good, isn't it? It's fine. So, can you tell me why you were eight minutes late to this meeting? Tom, I know you're not exactly enthusiastic about these sessions, That's but... the first thing you said all day that's true. <sighs> these are for your benefit, Tom. For the mm -hmm, whole crew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I've uh, looked through your files. I can see where you get it from. Good for you, Doc. I'm here to help you, Tom. It's my sole purpose Who says here. I need fucking help? It's not even been a week and you're still not getting off my back. Why do you say that? No, no. Fuck this. I'm not doing this bullshit. Tom. Bye. Tom! <laughs> End recording, Carl. Morgan's been... sorry. Zoe's been doing fine, mostly keeping busy with the generator and keeping the systems in check. You should feel what it's like down there. Zoe wasn't kidding when she said it was like an oven. Zoe! Zoe, you down here? Gib! Hey! It's boiling down here! What? I said it's boiling down here! Yeah, sorry. The generator gets hotter than you think. Need something? I couldn't get hold of you on the comms. They interfere with some of the wireless systems down here. Hey, Carl, unlock the coolant way. I'm blind. It's less stuffy in there. Come on. What did you say? Solar power is a lot weaker out here, so the generator has to work to compensate for the energy we don't get from the solar array outside the crater. Bit of a layman on engineering, so I have no idea what Zoe means half the time. Uh, apart from that, nothing else really. We're going to make a start with drilling through the moon's crust in a few days' time, once the drill has been assembled. Here's hoping we'll get that ocean everyone back home is anxious about. Give my thanks to the head honchos for this position, by the way. It's been something of a lifesaver. I'll make my second report after I get your reply in five days' time. Take care, moon station. End recording. Callisto by Elliot Summerfield Mimi Wilson as Zoe Morgan Andres Echeverry as Tom Stone Ossian Lotten as Dr. Esme Larocque Elizabeth Plant as Dr. Charlie Holmes AJ Kingston as Dr. Samuel Gibson Matt Haynes as Carl 